Hey everyone, today I'm super excited to show you around our latest project called Prospect Park at Suits and Sandals. So this site built on Webflow is a really immersive interactive map based on my favorite park here in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. And right here when we enter, we parachute down into the park itself. And then from here you can kind of click and drag and move about and fly around and discover different points of interest. Um, so here I can click on the boathouse and then from here I can learn a little bit more about this point of interest here and then zoom back out and continue and keep flying around. Let's just check out this other one, baseball fields. So these are kind of the baseball fields of Prospect Park. So what's really cool about this is that we started with Google Maps GIS data. So all of these pathways that you see where the buildings are, they're, they're to scale and they're really accurate. You can imagine extending this out to being able to give out directions and just overall, because it is an accurate scale, it allows you to kind of really feel how big the park is and how close things are to each other. What I really want to show you today is how we use Webflow to make the site easily editable with no code and how the project was set up to maximize the designer slash developer experience right in Webflow. So let's jump in and open up the Webflow project. So right away, you can see here that everything is white and hidden and you can't see anything, right? And this is because of the requirements of our load-in animations and all of the 3D custom code that's happening under the hood. So this is not a great way, obviously, to edit a Webflow page. Let's open up the pages to see how we've structured things. The home page, the main entry point for the experience, all of these elements and components and things like that is under the, this gated folder called components. So if we take a look at this components page, we'll see where someone who is a low code designer will spend most of their time to edit the styles, to update content and things like that. And what you'll notice here is first, we have kind of this nice little site header just to let you know where you are in the project. And then from there, it kind of just lists out in a 2D kind of flat environment, what the content looks like, what the UI looks like, um, making it really easy for you to design and edit anything that you might need. The biggest reason really why we did this instead of what you would traditionally see, which is a workflow that looks something like this, where you go into the element that is hidden by default and you start undoing all of the initial states. And then from here, you begin editing your styles. So instead of doing that, we divorced what divs handle those initial states and what divs handle the actual UI style of those elements. And by doing this, we can make sure that the designer doesn't really impact or break any of the custom code load in scripts that we have going on. The next thing is because Webflow doesn't actually render out any custom scripts right in this designer view, just seeing a website that's completely white all the time is a nightmare. So what we did was we have two different components. One is for the development or testing or anytime someone's working on the website as a way to improve their designer experience. And then once they're done, they would switch over to this production footer. Now, the difference between these two is that the production one doesn't load up any of the helper utility type things to improve the developer experience. And and the dev one has all of those things, which means that the performance on the dev is going to naturally be slower. Prod is a lot more optimized. What that looks like is literally you would just remove this component right there and then drop in the dev component. And right away, what you see is you now have a reference and context for the view that you're looking at. So if we go into our intro, as an example, we'll see that this is kind of of the intro that we see on the live website. However, of course, this is just a background image. So this really makes designing this layout 
a lot easier and more simple. So it was really important for us to scale and make sure that we're considering not just the end user's experience, but also the people maintaining this site over time. So now I wanna show you what the experience looks like for adding new points of interest, because as I mentioned, we're not using any custom code at all to create these points of interest. Everything is kind of handled within the Webflow CMS. We will go into the points of interest CMS collection, new point of interest. Let's type in Grand Army Plaza. Cool, and let's just do the same. I have this title field just in case we want something fancy in here, but we'll just call this Grand Army Plaza. Add some lorem ipsum here to start. Next, we need a marker ID, which is what's going to tag this entry itself so that our custom code can find it. Label Y offset, this is how high up the label will sit in the scene. So let's just drop in a random value here for now. And we're gonna adjust this in just a second. And then for the markers themselves, I'm going to just hit zero for all of them, which means it'll just get positioned in the complete center of the entire experience. The camera is when we click on the label, where should the camera go? So here I'm just setting everything to zero as well. And the icon, I'll just leave that blank for now. Cool. So I'm gonna publish this and we'll see what happens here. Great, so now that that is published, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Here's our experience and enter. And what we should see is right in the middle of the scene, there just there should be just a random point. Yeah, there it is. First of all, that's how easy it is to just guess something on the scene. How do we move this thing around? And to do that, it's as easy as adding cache debug at the end of the URL and just hitting refresh here. And it will open up this little GUI element right here. And you can see actually there's a few things here right off the bat. Right now, we're just seeing the camera and this intro plane, which is actually what controls these clouds. This isn't through the CMS or anything, but here our developers can change the look and feel of these clouds just in case we wanna adjust the overall styles. But then as you enter, you'll see that it will dynamically load in all of the points that we have. And there's Grand Army Plaza all the way over there, right in zero zero and as you might recall we did do two on the Y. Let's keep it at two for now. First, let's take a look at where Grand Army Plaza actually is. It's over here. So we want that label to come over there. What we're gonna do is just start moving these values right here. So I, I want the X to move that way and the Z. So we really just need the X and the Z to position this guy. Let's keep moving him over. He's flying over there. And then finally, we'll move him right there and then kind of just land him right there. I think that looks good. So now he's kind of right on top of the Grand Army Plaza. And as you can see, he's fully in 3D space. I can spin around and he'll always just be right where we expect him to be in the space. I can go kind of near him and see that he's over there. So the next step here is we finally have our values here. We have 80 on the Z and you know, minus 1.212. So I'm just gonna copy this value. This is the X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna copy the X first head back into Webflow, open up Grand Army Plaza here, and the marker X, I'm gonna put minus 1.2. And for the Z, I'm gonna grab uh, 80. And there we go. So the Y is two, and just hit save, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, let me refresh here. We can even hide our GUI. We don't need that right now. Go back into the experience here and everyone's loaded and you can see Grand Army is no longer over there. And let's spin around here and make sure that he's there. Awesome. So there he is. The next thing is if we click this, it's gonna look all crazy, right? The camera wasn't set up yet. So we're just looking into the abyss. What we're gonna wanna do next is position our camera. So let me bring back the debug and minimize that so I can kind of quickly spin around. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it back up and start moving these camera values right here. So first, what I wanna do maybe is be really close to maybe just somewhere around here or maybe even looking on this side. So let's start playing around with this. So on the X, you can see, you know, I can kind of fly this way or that way. So I'm gonna just go this way. So minus 3.4. 
then I maybe want to get lower to the ground so I can kind of see that archway and then move myself uh, closer to where Grand Army is. So right now we're literally right on top of that. Um, so this will just kind of take some finessing here. So then uh, maybe we can move backwards just a touch. Yeah, maybe like that. And then move ourselves to the right. And then have a nice little crop that looks like this maybe. Uh, maybe we do wanna go up just a tad there. So let's say we're kind of happy with this crop. So this is kind of like the Grand Army Plaza is like right here. Now we wanna grab these camera values. So X, Y, and Z. So camera X, I'll copy that over and then go over here, paste the X value, go back to the preview, copy that and paste it here. And then finally the Z. For the rotation, let's just do, I don't know, a two. So we are actually going to need that rotation. Um, let me go back in here and click this guy. Okay, so we're facing the wrong way. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let me rotate and find where we need to be right here. There we go. So maybe we need like that. So 155, back to points of interest. Let me add that, hit save, publish. Let's see if our values are correct here. Parachuting down, cool. So let me spin around here, find Grand Army and click that, it's spelled incorrectly. But there we go. So that is Grand Army Plaza. Um, <laughs> had a typo there, <laughs> oh God. Plaza, Plaza, there you go. And then everything looks good. And let's publish, go back into our experience here. Enter, cool. And then now we're here. Uh, let's go look for Grand Army Plaza, spin around, spin around, there she is. And then click, and there you have it. We animate right into it, no code whatsoever, all in Webflow. So that's the experience, super simple right now, but you can really imagine all of the things you can do because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all the stuff in here is just normal HTML and CSS. So we can put content right in there. Right now it's just a rich text field. It can go into other pages. It can go into Google Maps for directions. So the possibilities are pretty endless here, which is you know, super exciting for us to have this type of functionality and have a prototype right on Webflow that really works and is really performant. So, you know, we're very excited to see where this goes. I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions about this project, let me know. I am going to be, I'm gonna try and crank out a bunch more content about the workflow, you know, the technologies that we use and all that good stuff. So hit the like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.